Hello and welcome to UGC e Patshala project. I am Sheetal Arora, Assistant Professor Criminology at Sadar Patel University of Police Security and Criminal Justice, Jodhpur. And I am going to present a module on Types of Police Organization, Structure of State Police, District Police, City Police, Metropolitan Police and Rural Policing. Let's begin with learning objectives of this module that is to make the learners understand the types of police organizations in India. Second, to make the learners understand various organizational setup of police in India. Third, to acquaint the learners with the process relating to police. Fourth, to make the learners understand the different aspects of the policing such as district police, city police, metropolitan police and rural police. Let us begin with the introduction regarding the police organization in Indian states. Organization of Indian police is primarily governed by the Police Act 1861. Section 4 of this statute lays down the principles on which the organization of police force rests till today. The police were made subordinate to the executive government. Later, several changes were brought about in the structure as well as functioning of the police system. But the basic structure and characteristics as enriched in the Police Act of 1861 continued to dominate over the police system in the country. The police is a state subject and its organization and working are governed by rules and regulations framed by the state governments. These rules and regulations are outlined in the police manuals of the state police forces. Each state's union territories has its separate police forces. Despite the diversity of police forces, there is a good deal that is common amongst them. This is due to four main reasons. One, the structure and working of the state police forces are governed by the Police Act of 1861, which is applicable in most part of the India, or by the state police acts, modelled mostly on the 1861 legislation. Second, major criminal laws like the Indian Penal Court, the Code of Criminal Procedure, the Indian Evidence Act, etc. are uniformly applicable to almost all parts of the country. Third, the Indian Police Service, IPS, is an all India service which is recruited, trained and managed by the central government and which provides the bulk of senior officers to the state police forces. Fourth, the quasi-federal character of the Indian polity with specific provisions in the constitution allows a coordinating and counselling role for the centre in police matters and even authorises it to set up certain central police organisation. Now, regarding the organisation structure at state level, superintendence over the police force in the state is exercised by the state government. The head of the police force in the state is the Director General of Police. Regarding field establishment, states are divided territorially in the administrative units known as districts. Superintendent of Police heads the district police force. A group of districts form a range which is looked after by an officer of the rank Deputy Inspector General of Police. Some states have zones comprising two or more ranges under the charge of an Inspector General of Police. Every district is divided into subdivisions. A subdivision is under the charge additional superintendent of police or deputy superintendent of police. Every subdivision is further divided into a number of police stations depending on its area, population and volume of crime. Between the police stations and the subdivisions, there are police circles. In some states, each circle headed generally by an inspector of police the police stations is the basic unit of police administration in a district. Under the criminal procedure code, all crime has to be recorded at the police station and all preventive, investigative and law and order work is done from there. A police station is divided into a number of beats which are assigned to constables for patrolling, surveillance, collection of intelligence etc. 
The officer in charge of a police station is an inspector of police, particularly in cities and metropolitan areas. Even in other places, the bigger police stations in terms of area, population, crime or law and order problem are placed under the charge of inspector of police. In rural areas or smaller police stations, the officer in charge is usually a sub-inspector of police. About the inter alia states, the administration of the police throughout a general police district now called states done by the inspector general of police in such deputy inspector general and assistant inspector general as the state government shall deem fit. The organization police system in India represent a queer amalgam of the Hindu, Mughal and British tradition and institutions. Police organizations at the grassroots level got localized. Following is a diagram representing the structure of the police in the states of India. In a quick glance, one may note again that the Director General of Police is in charge of the state police force followed by the additional Director General of Police followed by the Inspector General of Police who is in charge of a zone which comprises of few ranges followed by the Deputy Inspector General of Police who is in charge of a range which comprise of group of districts followed by senior superintendent of police who is in charge of the bigger district followed by the superintendent of police who is in charge of the district followed by the additional superintendent of police followed by the assistant or deputy superintendent of police who is in charge of a subdivision in the district followed by inspector of the police who is in charge of the police station followed by sub-inspector of the police who is in charge of a smaller police station followed by assistant sub-inspector of police who is part of the staff of the police station followed by head constable who is again part of staff of the police station and lastly police constable as staff of police station. For administrative needs or purposes, there may be one or more additional superintendent of police and deputy superintendent of police. The superintendent of police is in charge of entire police force in the district and is responsible to the district magistrate so far law and order problem is concerned. However, in metropolitan cities like Bombay, Calcutta, Madras, Hyderabad, etc., Powers of superintendent of police and district magistrates are combined in single official, the police commissioner. The constitution provides exclusive power on the states to control and regulate the functioning of the police as the maintenance of public order and police including the railway and village police are the state subjects. The central government is concerned only with the administration of central police reserve force, the border security force the Central Industrial Security Force and also the Central Bureau of Investigation and Intelligence Bureau. The police in the state government is broadly divided in three categories, headquarters, establishment, field establishment, commissionerate system. On the other hand, each commissionerate has its own individual police force headed by an IPS officer with the designation of commissioner of police city. The commissioner of police city may be of the rank of additional or special DGP but also be an IGP or DIGP. The commissioner of police city is assisted by one to several joint commissioner of police who usually hold the rank of IGP or additional IGP. Each is in charge of a bureau, law and order, crime etc. mirroring the organization of the state police as a whole. The police largely performs at the state level the role of a police officer even in the line hierarchy gets transformed in staff functions which they have to perform at three distinct levels as follows. Staff functions as the union government and its auxiliary agencies, staff functions in relation to home department of the state government and staff come line functions in relation to the line officials in the districts. Police districts. The police administration is built around police districts. Each police range comprises of four or more police districts, which coincide with the boundaries of the revenue districts. 
The district is further subdivided into police circles and police stations. The police circles are placed under the control of circle inspectors while the police stations are administratively managed by the sub-inspectors of the police which are known by several names in vernacular language in different states. Some police stations also have their police outpost or chalkies within their territorial jurisdiction which are usually under the charge of head constables or assistant SIS of police depending on the importance of the place where an outpost is located. Talking in terms of organizational purposes, a police station is the smallest field unit of police administration. Several states have abolished police inspectors in the wake of administrative reorganization. The SP who heads the district police office also coordinates the functions of the heads of the district police lines, district crime bureau, district special branch, district traffic branch and the district prosecution branch. The volume of the work which depends upon the size and the special demographic characteristics of the district generally determines the size of the police network and the functions of the SP. As a police chief, he has to work in close licensing and collaboration with his administrative seniors at the range and state headquarters. The organizational chart given uh, ahead depicts the chain of command as obtained in the police organization of a typical district now regarding district headquarters and the office of SP. The district police organization constitutes the hub of the Indian police system. On an average, an Indian district covers about 3,600 square miles and a population of over a million and a quarter people. In addition to providing administrative services, the district headquarters have to large jail and storehouses for clothing, equipment, arms and ammunition. Constables for the district are recruited and partly trained here. Armed police and sometimes mounted police also have their reserve lines or barracks there. The CID organization operates from its headquarters. Adequate discretion has been vested in the police authorities at this level and this facilitates a happy mediation between general directives and adjustment to specific circumstances. Now about the SP at the district level. The SP at the district level is always a member and IPS and wields a great amount of power and prestige in the area. Working under the overall supervision of the district magistrate, he looks after the problem of law and order and that of the administration of crime and voices in the district. As the chief intelligence officer of the district, he collects information from the lower level and sends his assessment report to the superiors of the district police personnel system. He also looks after the service conditions of the junior police employees working under his charge. He is directly responsible for their efficiency, morale and discipline as policemen. In districts which territorially include big cities, the SPs have additional and special responsibilities such as regulation and control of traffic, collection of special intelligence and handling of political and communal conflict of violent nature. The district or the state police organizations control the network of police stations spread all over the country. The superintendent of police who presides over this organization is the key functionary through whom the state government operates and the police stations look at him for command, guidance and action. Hierarchically speaking, the district police in the most of the states stand organized into police subdivisions and police circles which comprise a cluster of police stations. Regarding the additional or deputy superintendent of police, he or she look after the work of police subdivision while the circle inspectors deal with the supervisory work of police stations falling within their respective circles. A number of staff agencies such as Crime Bureau, Special Branch and Special Investigating Agency etc. stand converged into the office of the district SP. The SP thus operates through a network of line units such as police stations, special squads, prosecuting branch, traffic police and reserve police. The SP is empowered to take all sorts of preventive measures in the situation of apprehension of breach of peace. To avoid untoward situation, he may advise the collector of the district to issue prohibitory orders and clamp curfew if the situation becomes very tense. 
In the event of the actual breach of peace, he is expected to make adequate police arrangements to cope with the situation. Crowd control during fairs and religious festivals are his special concerns. If agitations are launched by political parties or other militant groups, the SP is required to take special precautions consistent with the susceptibility of special groups, Holi Diwali, Bakra Eid, VIP visit, election campaigns and political meetings etc. are some of the special occasions when mass congregations threaten to violate public order and as such their management constitutes special responsibilities of SP. Deliberate violations of laws is a crime and even where it does not disturb public peace or security in an immediate sense it has to be detected and plugged in time in the larger public interest. The SP of a district has special responsibility in this regard. He controls the incidence of crime in his district through effective patrol by his fleet, investigation of grave crimes and making and receiving special reports about these cases and administrative supervision over his subordinates who keep constant vigilance, take preventive measures and maintain up-to-date records of criminals in the district. Now regarding subsidiary duties of the SP, the function entails a number of has to call for reports, supervise in person and visit the scene of crime soon after their occurrence. This is a major traditional function and the victims involved in these crimes can go to the SP as a grief parties in appeal. He supervises the operations of crime and special branches of his CID. He sends periodic information to the DIG intelligence at regular intervals. He acts as a line agency on behalf of the state organization of the CID, which in turn may ask him to undertake certain special kinds of intelligence operation on the request of the union agencies like CBI or CIB or SPE. The civil, the political and the senior police officials of the government have to be kept constantly informed about the incriminating activities of the disruption of peace and enemies of the state. The functions of the SP further include various other organizational and personal responsibilities at the district level. He has to maintain an adequate supply of vehicles, arms, communications, equipments and other accessories like uniforms etc. in a good shape. He inspects police station within his jurisdiction jurisdictionally and provides for necessary physical conditions to keep his men working in a satisfactory state of a morale and motivation. As a captain of his team, SP has critical say in the policies pertaining to recruitment, promotion, training programs and disciplinary matters. He evaluates the performance of his administrative subordinates and takes disciplinary actions as and where needed. To bring discipline in the force, he attends parades, give personal interviews and recommend cases for promotion, punishment and transfers to his senior. He organizes sports tournaments, annual get-togethers and special meets to keep his distinct force in high spirits. He undertakes police welfare projects and provides initiatives to his juniors for better performance. As head of the office, he is personally responsible for the correctness of cash and store accounts of his department. Now regarding duties at the police station level, the office of the sub-inspector of police. It was the office around which Sir Charles Napier reorganized his Sindh Constabulary under the District Police Superintendents in 1853. The Police Commission of 1902 also lamented a great deal about organizational contradiction and personal policy loosens at all the levels below the superintendent of police. However, very little concrete or reformatory action could emerge in the background of the history of the national movement. This one potent factor has kept the Indian police insulated and relatively stagnant for almost the entire 20th century. Now regarding the sub-inspector, it has contributed a great deal to the omnipotence and omnipresence of the sub-inspector in the relief of the law and order administration. Being the lowest responsible functionary on the spot, he has been handling the sociology of crime 
and the politics of mass violence and quasi non violence with a lot of discretion in the absence of a communication revolution. Although independence has radically altered the politics, the economics and the social dimensions of the country, the fact remains that notwithstanding a few ritualistic exhortations in the periodic reports of the state police commissions, nothing basic or serious has been attempted or even conceived of to rationalize his position powers duties and relationship in the emerging pattern of an administration in the states at the center. Mass education, adult suffrage, parliamentary system of government, panchayati raj, urban patterns of living, liberation of women, labor unionism, communal tensions and increasing youth violence have all added to his predicate meets but still very much like Casablanca instinctively trained to obey his seniors. He stands on the burning docks of social upheaval with literally very little mental and professional equipment to combat with all these 10 situations. His recruitment and training have rendered him into a pathetic state of physical and mental insecurity. He is efficient but he does not care what about the social and economic cost involved. Having nothing but crude and blatant power to exhibit and constantly surrounded by all sorts of criminals, delinquents, neurotics and abnormal, he becomes mentally and intellectually fragile to withstand any kind of strain. He thus develops arrogance and tendency to flatter his seniors. He becomes an escapist and develops a pathetic approach towards his surroundings. The recruitment and training of sub-inspectors and the constabulary are not only out of tune with the present times but are also irrelevant and not purposefully linked with the purpose of the organization. Only skills are being imparted and in the absence of the norms and attitude, they are working the other way around. The incentives driven and the follow-up programs at the training centers do not bring desired results in the absence of a performance evaluation. The trainers bring in the problem of generation gap and require retraining themselves. The training also breeds professional casteism and generates low morale among those who are yet to launch upon their lifetime careers. Obviously, an ill-equipped recruit military trained and brainwashed into the professional skills and physical discipline of the profession by his hierarchical seniors can hardly grow into a dynamic police officers whom the changing police scene in India so sadly needs and so badly demands. Now regarding the police station, a police station by definition is a place or a post generally or specifically declares as such by the state government and includes local area specified by the state government on this behalf. It's a primary administrative unit of police investigation where information and complaints about cognizable offences are registered. The jurisdiction of a police station is often changed or recognized by the state government on the recommendations of the DGP, the IG range and the district collector. The average area of a police station in India is about 200 square miles covering about 100 villages or so with the population of approximately 1 lakh persons. However, the jurisdiction of a police station in northern states tend to be larger than what it is in the southern states. The density of population also makes a difference, so much so that while in West Bengal an average police station stretches to 1 to 2.4 square miles of territory inhabiting 1 lakh 6 thousand people in the states of Rajasthan, the corresponding figures about uh, 3 police stations are 27 square miles of territory with 4,210 people only. Normally, the personnel of a police station consists of 1 SI, 1 head constable and 15 constables. Functionally speaking, the police station in Indian states are generally of five types. The rural police station, the town police station, the suburban police station, the metropolitan police station. Now about the railway police station. 
A police station under law is a unit of police activity in terms of total line functions. The three tier hierarchy is headed by a SI who along with a team of ASIs, head constable and constables look after police jobs in the area. He is also called as SHO or officer in charge of police station. He has numerous duties and immense responsibilities in the field of police administration. In fact, he is a multi-purpose man and the police laws require demanding services from him. His duties and functions are prescribed and enumerated in the police acts and other statutes. But additionally, he has a number of other informal and discretionary jobs to perform besides his assigned duties. Now, regarding the system of rural policing. The Indian Police Commission 1902 recommended a system of village police which continued for the rest of the period of British regime in India. The village police in a district has two distinct parts, namely the village watchmen and the village voluntary organizations. The commissions appointed by different state governments in India have strongly condemned the structure and working of village watchmen. However, the Indian Police Commission of 1902 found it relevant and useful in the particular given context of history and rural sociology. The principle of village responsibility for policing which the commission advanced and advocated would yield the following characteristics of the Chokidari system. The village, recognized as a unit for revenue and journal administration should have a police watchman for the village. The village police officer, that is the SHO, should not be the master or superior of the headman. The village headman should be a multi-purpose person and must concentrate on one village only. The district police may control his failures of duty in a limited manner and for all practical purposes he should be answerable to the civilian head of the district or to his subordinates. The post of the village headman should be stipendary and may be as far as possible hereditary and he should only be a part-time government servant. Regarding the police organization at the district level, has wide and complex mixed duties pertaining to the registration and investigation of crime, patrolling, surveillance, services of processes, collection of intelligence, arrest of criminal searches and seizures of property and other detective and preventive measures that are undertaken by police stations located in the field. The big city police stations are called Kotwalis and are generally put under the charge of inspectors. Normally, a sub-inspector heads the administration of an urban as well as rural police stations, he is assigned a varying number of sub-inspectors, assisted sub-inspectors, head constables and constables to do the job of policing. The actual number of these functionaries depends upon the size of the police station and the nature of work or crime a police station has to handle. The character and organization of urban and rural police stations are almost identical and they follow similar procedures of police work in all the states of the Union. As a repository of information about the area, the police stations maintain daily diary, cases diaries, FIR registers, case registers, cash books, Malkana registers and history sheets records. Together they present the profile of crime and criminals which obviously differ from state to state area to area and station to station. Panchayati Raj as a developmental mechanism has unleashed all kind of new variables and tensions in the political economic system of the rural India. It has thrown up new leadership and new threats of public disorder and crimes which the old police machines find increasingly difficult to cope with. Thirdly, the pace of the social change and gradual modernization of traditional ways of living are not only eroding the structure of social values but have also introduced quasi-rural patterns of community living in medium-class towns. 
the mixed situation marking transition from rural to pen urban community living dissolves special responsibilities upon the guardians of law and order who find the police organizations in the distinct too ill equipped and stagnant to deal with the pressures of change the changing socio political context presents a bewildering picture of the district police organization in which an sp is too high and too far away from the actual scene of the police operation and an si is too inadequately qualified and ill trained to handle growing complex situations of changing india the illiterate policemen at the lowest rung of the organizational ladder is fast becoming an encronist even for the rural police and if the democratic system continues to move with the speed organization and officials of the police station will be too frail and too inadequate to live up to their minimal duties in conclusion one may say that it can be stated that the structure and mechanism of district police administration has been too static to face the dynamism the officials recruited at the lower ranks of the hierarchy are neither qualified nor they are capable of working according to the changing needs of the community there is over centralization in organization the old structure have yielded little room for specializations and stratifications and are not open to innovations and reform the organizational functioning of police has been adversely affected by compulsions of political awakening and new socio cultural ethos of the post independence era the need for decentralization and autonomous flat structures at the state and district level police administration is increasingly being realized lastly the entire police machinery requires overhauling and reorganization at the levels of hierarchy especially at the district is more than overdue thank you